Pacific Explorer will be sailing into Sydney Harbour in just a couple of days' time. Plus, the eastern states have outlined their cruise policies, so we'll dive into what they mean now. I'm Adrian, the Cruise and Travel Guy. As always, thank you for subscribing to my channel, and if you haven't done so yet, please hit that subscribe button. Last weekend, P&O Australia made the announcement that we had all been waiting for. Their flagship Pacific Explorer will be sailing into Sydney Harbour on Monday, April 18th. To mark the occasion, there will be three tugboats providing her with a water cannon salute and then escorting her through the harbour and to the overseas passenger terminal. Pacific Explorer is expected to round Sydney's heads at approximately 9.30 on Monday morning. From there, she'll make her way into the harbour over the course of the following hour and eventually dock at the terminal at 10.30. This truly momentous occasion seems pretty surreal. During previous summer cruise seasons, I used to make my way over to Sydney's Circular Quay regularly to go for a walk, and one of the highlights was always seeing a ship in port. I think I took it for granted, never considering that there could be a time two years even, that cruise ships would be banned from our waters. I can honestly say that I won't ever take it for granted again. Being a public holiday, we're expecting a lot of people to line the foreshores and watch the occasion as Pacific Explorer returns home after two long years away. P&O will also have a competition running where you can win a cruise if you share your photos and videos using the PO Cruises is home hashtag. So make sure you check that out and get posting. When it comes to what Pacific Explorer will be doing between her time arriving in Sydney on April 18th and her first cruise departure on Tuesday, May 31st, well, nothing has been announced yet. It could be that the next six weeks will be spent stocking and supplying the ship, finalising the protocols around health screening and boarding, and maybe even bringing crew on board. I myself have my boarding pass ready and printed for that very first cruise. Over the last week or so, Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria have all made announcements with more information about the protocols that they'll be putting in place that will support the restart of the cruise industry within their states. The following protocols apply to New South Wales, but it's pretty much the same across all three states. All passengers over the age of 12 and crew will need to be fully vaccinated. All passengers and crew will be required to have a negative COVID test before embarkation, and will require the wearing of masks at embarkation and disembarkation. COVID safe plans will be developed for all shore excursions. COVID safe plans are required for disembarkation of any COVID positive cases and their close contacts. And cruise operators will provide for a range of enhanced onboard public health measures to reduce the risk of transmission. Typical of any government announcement, it's a bit light on detail. The biggest question being what type of COVID test will be required before boarding? An easily accessible and more affordable rapid antigen test or a more expensive and more accurate PCR test? Though not yet confirmed, the industry consensus is that a rapid antigen test taken within one day of boarding will be acceptable. P&O have publicly stated that they expect to have their protocols published within the next week. Until that happens, it's really all just conjecture. At this point, they could tell me I need to backflip off Sydney Tower wearing an Aladdin costume, and I would do it. Oh my god, what the hell is this? No, no, no thank you, we're done. No, no, we're done, done. During ports of call, it's expected that passengers will be able to undertake private shore excursions or just make their way off the ship to do their own thing without needing to be on a cruise ship excursion. The argument being that if I can jump on a plane and fly to Cairns and get off and do what I like, why can't I do the same thing if I've arrived on a ship? This is another protocol that I expect to be finalised in the coming days. Whilst the mainland states, for the most part, are ready for cruising to begin, the Tasmanian state government has reaffirmed that it has no intention to allow large cruise ships into their ports for the foreseeable future. Though the state allows small cruise ships carrying no more than 99 passengers within their borders, they plan to take a wait-and-see approach to anything bigger. How that affects any upcoming cruise itineraries remains to be seen, but personally, I feel like we all need to have a little bit of flexibility built into our expectations when it comes to the cruising restart. I'm sure it won't all be smooth sailing, but it beats no cruising at all. In the US, Princess announced the cancellation of all Sapphire Princess voyages, scheduled between June 25th and September 17th. The cruise line stated that there have been delays affecting the time frame for resuming guest operations. 
Unconfirmed reports have cited crew shortages as the main problem. Closer to home, Clear's Ready Set Sail initiative has made waves across the ditch. In a newsletter update, Clear MD Joel Katz said that together with the New Zealand Crews Association, there have been promising discussions with the New Zealand government and things are looking up for a cruising restart there. The New South Wales state government has proposed the removal of shipping restrictions for the Sapphire Coast port of Eden. These include abolishing the annual limit of 60 cruise ship visits per year, removing the 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. curfew, and making enhancements to the docking facility that would allow ships over 325 meters in length to dock there. The aim of this proposal is to attract the world's largest cruise ships to the port of Eden, taking advantage of its enviable location and regional offerings. A community consultation period will be followed by authorities considering the proposal in mid-2023. Well, that's it for this week's Cruise News Update. Very exciting times are just ahead and I plan to bring you the momentous occasion on Monday direct to YouTube next week. So look out for that video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do. And if you are looking at booking a cruise, you can head to my website, thecruiseandtravelguy.com.au. And if you haven't done so already, you can give me a follow on Facebook and Instagram at The Cruise and Travel Guy. Stay safe and I'll see you soon. Last weekend, p Australia made the announcement that we had all been waiting for. They're fla. To mark the occasion, there will be three tugboats. More information about the health protocols that they will be enforcing and that allows... What was that? An easily accessible and more affordable antigen... Antigen. But I think we all need to have a little bit of flexibility built in when it comes to these early restart cruise voyages. Thank you.